Can you please describe this photo? What is your diagnosis? In all the four quarters of it. Also, I can see the Venus torch also. I can also see that there is a discarding of skin. Anything else? Anything else? Do you have a photograph of that? Did you take a photograph of OIS? Yes. Everybody is taking so nice. The girls are getting so superior. Really proud. This is something I would have done. Because now I'm thinking how does OIS look this one? So it looks like gravity retinopathy more than because this is uh, not having consciousness, definitely. The inflation point is not there. The <coughs> tomato splash is not there. All four quadrants are having a lot of energy. Okay. It can also be diabetic retinopathy, but diabetic retinopathy will have bilateral findings. Radiation retinopathy will have. You have? You also the photo? Good job. How does everybody have the same notes? That day, from here itself, I didn't make it to the short notes. From here itself. Yeah, we'll just do that. You showed that picture. This picture in glasses. So, got no sports. Then are you following? Yes. Okay, great. Now. Papilledema. Papilledema. Bilateral. Okay, so yes. what can be the etiology in this case? Atherosclerosis. Atherosclerotic emboli, hypertension, glaucoma, dysplosion. <coughs> 
anything that hypoglycemic, anything that increases the pressure in the disc, disc edema, hypertension, glaucoma, distrusions, embolus, and others. Then hypoglycemic strain. Hypoglycemic strain uh, is okay. It's not the wrong answer, but CRVO and CRVO has to have some difference. If you have the same thing with CRVO and CRVO, you will forget all of them. In CRVO, what happens is the pressure in the disc is increasing. In CRVO, there is just one artery that is getting stopped. That's it. There is no pressure increasing in the disc. Only one embolus will go. So, embolus is the main thing about it. That's why we were always saying embolus, 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 and then have a problem with strain. But here, this pressure, this pressure, this pressure, this pressure, this pressure, and then hyperglycemic strain. If you keep saying hyperglycemic strain, that is what you will remember, and on the day of the why you will say hyperglycemic strain. Such a hyperglycemic strain in the CRV relationship, such a core half is down the line. Most of it is more likely is for pressure and the disc, pressure and the disc, pressure. Now, not talking about the pressure and the disc, disc loosens, disc edema, glaucoma, and an embolus can also cause it. Yeah, disc loosens. And uh, embolus can also cause increase in the pressure in the disc. Now, whereas CO, CRO will be fat amyloid, like, thrombotic amyloid, like, fat amyloid, like, fibrin, fibrin thrombin plaques. Okay. What is the What are the types of CRVO? She makes a noise. Yeah. Can you please tell us about the types of CRVO? Ischemic CRVO and non-ischemic CRVO. Ischemic CRVO, there will be multiple coordinates, modes, averages. RAPD will be present. One second, please. In ischemic CRVO, there will be multiple coordinates, modes. Yeah, and RAPD will be tested. Pressure activity will be uh, was less than CA2 to 3. Will be less than 2 to 3. CA2 to 3. Yes, agreed. Okay. Uh, non streaming there will be mild, but there will be no hemorrhages. RAPD will not be present. Pressure activity is better than CA2. Perfect answer. Nobody has ever answered CRP or ischemic and non-ischemic so Give it the same answer as I got. It's very important. If it's a CRP case, and if you're not talking about the differentiation between ischemic and non-ischemic, it's useless. Okay. The difference of non-ischemic and ischemic CRP is extremely important. Okay, so now let's start with the work up. Yes. 
any guest wants to go to the So let's. Sweet land is there, Vishen? Vishen. Are you okay? Are you okay? Why are you okay? No doubt, Lokoma. Lokoma is a cause for CRC. Are you okay? No, you're not just like a kid. It goes slowly. Simple is what you're doing. In city, you're doing. This is uh, first of all, there is uh, IRN, internal fluid, there is SRS. Along with that, you also have this uh, outer retinal tubulations, diffuse outer retinal tubulations. This is a typical feature of RPO. So, whenever you have RPO, this is how the retina will be looking because there is so much pressure that the retina is just bursting. This is getting detached. <coughs> So you will do an OCT and uh, to look at for the typical features of an RBO. 
will also try to uh, look for any map ready one any experiment. Then you will look for uh, if you you will see huge uh, carefully on the freedom areas. And uh, you will also see huge areas. Yeah, you can see if there's a linkage of radio vessels. If you differentiate between obviously you start to and US basically. What else? Fun is fun. We scan to rule out any distrusions. Which of the distrusions can also cross. So I think we have one one step further more than this guy. Let's see. So complete offline examination. IOP. Careful central lab evaluation. Venuscopy to rule out NVI and VI. So Dina was right about Venuscopy. IOP, central lab you ought to. So now you guys are able to use your common sense. Right? How do you guys feel about this? Sidra? Did you read and give the answers? So we discussed like mature doctors. So we are able to discuss doctors on the doctor's level. That is the uh, approach I wanted you guys to learn. Having learned the workup for CRV or any of these for that matter, you will come to the conclusion very fast and there will be seven investigations. For all uh, diseases, either two are not there, either these two are not there, or that, but ultimately four or five you are supposed to do. So, but what you see each other is something different that is a lot more. But at least as, as long as industries are naming them, you can definitely use your brain and come to your own conclusions. So, NVA, NVA, you were right. Again, uh, sorry, Dana. Directed from us, we all said. IVFA handling was right. She was saying IVF before OCT. I was saying OCT before IVF because OCT is more invasive. But here also it's given IVF before OCT. In IVF, like Siddhartha told, we will look for the risk of revascularization proportional to the degree of catheter or perfusion. So, maybe IVF is done for the risk of revascularization. Here you will not in behind it. In optical coherence tomography, detect the presence or extent of fragility. As well as monitor response to therapy. So when you give VEGF, anti VEGF in CRP, the animal goes down. So the amount of moderating interpolations are supposed to subside. So looking at the subsidization of the you can say that this guy is actually responding well. If the diagnosis is uncertain, oculo pneumo flexible to or ophthalmo dynamometry may help distinguish CRBO from keratin disease. So this is extremely important. I forgot this point completely. Ophthalmo dynamometry distinguish CRBO from keratin disease. Ophthalmic artery pressure is low in the previous. How do you differentiate between CRBO and ocular risk syndrome? Yeah. Yeah. Syndrome means carotid artery is not able to give blood. Why? Because the carotid artery suddenly has blocked. So if something gets blocked, the pressure off to the block increases, but before the block increases. Agreed? 
the road accident has happened, where is the pressure increase, where is the more traffic, before the accident or after the accident? Before. Before, after the accident, the road is still open. Similarly, the character artery also, so the block is very high, low pressure. Normally, there is very high pressure in the character because the artery is a high pressure. So, when you check with the help of an ophthalmodiagometer, or you do ophthalmodiagometry, you will see that there is ophthalmic artery that is low pressure. When it is CRV, the pressure will be normal. Yes? That is very distinguished between CRVO and all virus. 100% you will forget to answer this point. But it's a very good Okay? Even if you forget to mention it, somebody asks you, you can always tell that OIS and CRV is the same thing. Okay. Systemically, you can ask them for any medications they are taking. You can check their blood pressure. Check their blood pressure. <coughs> Get to some blood tests. HPA also. Clinically indicated, particularly in younger patients, instead of hemoglobin and prognosis, medial RPR in A, ABC, ANA, and diagnosis. So, once again, what if CRVO comes in a younger person? What will be your What will be your It's an old thing, it's always. Glycosylated hemoglobin, profile, cholesterol, all those things. Okay? But if it's an old guy, if it's a young guy, we are supposed to consider VDRL. VDRL or is syphilis. FTA, ABS is syphilis. We consider ANA is SLE. Systemic glucoserotonin mortalosis happens due to ANA. Diaglobulin is due to uh, hypoglycosylation. The phosphate antibodies is due to also some uh, autoimmune diseases. Factor five diabetes is due to an autoimmune disease. Protein C and S levels is due to hyperglycemia. Anti-thrombin three mutation is also due to hyperglycemia. Prothrombin G two zero two one zero S A. You guys are doing all these things. Homocysteine levels, serum-related protein process in the state of health. I think for younger people, we can say VDR syphilis, FDA, ABS syphilis, you will do ANA, you will do antiphospholipid antibodies, and factor pilot mutation. This is enough. If the patient is younger, you go for the these workups, these investigations. If the person is old, you can obviously go for. Yes. How would you suppose you will treat him? Or blood. So one important thing is oral contraceptives. So oral contraceptives are medicines that are taken to prevent pregnancies or to delay pregnancies. Many uh, 18 to 24 that 31 that reproductive age group will have this. So if you have a patient, if it's a young patient, you should, if it's a young boy, you cannot ask about oral contraceptive what she should take. But if it's a young girl, you are supposed to ask him, her if she's taking oral contraceptives. Because oral contraceptives increase the amount of protein in the free serum. That is the relevant triggers. But it increases DIBT in the free serum which ultimately causes less proteins to be in the pool of livers. So when liver does not have enough protein, it will not produce enough uh, coagulation factors and coagulation does not happen properly. So when there is no coagulation happening or hypercoagulation happening, you can have this CRV. So that is a long story from all contributors. Something, something that women think is so harmless, is so dangerous. And all, all the contributors are also the cause of breast cancer also. We keep reading so many times. So if it's a young girl, you should ask for old contraceptives. If it's a young boy, you should suspect autoimmune disorders. As uh, SLE, let's check for ANA, antiphospholipid antibodies, factor pilot mutation, prothrombin 3 mutation, factor protein CNS levels of hyperglycemic state, and 
also you should ask the guy if he is sexually transparent with users like DABS and VDL. Too many acronyms for you guys. So fast, I have to get the book and go. But the same thing is, it's always and always about it. If it's an old guy, CRAO, hypertension, lipid profile, glucose. If it's an old guy, CRAO, hypertension, lipid profile, glucose. If it's a young guy, CRAO, autoimmune disorders, hypoglycemic states, etc. If it's a young guy, CRAO, autoimmune disorders, hypoglycemic states, and etc. Same things for young people over here. If it's a boy, if it's a girl, also oral contraceptives in CRAO, also oral contraceptives in CRAO. Probably you guys have never thought about this. Actually, uh, not oral contraceptives, but oral contraceptives have this tendency to cause so many complications. So you ask the patient to discontinue your oral contraceptives if she is taking and uh, along with that treat the underlying medical disorders if NVI or NVA is present for 4 pm. If NVD or synthetic. If NVD, NVI, or NVA. If NVD, NVI, NVA, NVE is there, for how PR? Simple. Prophylactic PRP is not recorded unless follow up is in doubt. Intravitreal HF in the inhibitors are very effective and temporarily halting or reversing anterior and posterior segment tumor spiritual. Intravital vagin. They may, they may be a useful adjunct to PR, particularly when rapid, when rapid reversal of revascularization is needed. Useful adjunct to PR. Aspirin 81 to 325 mg for oral QD is often recommended, but no clinical trials have demonstrated efficacy today and it may increase the risk of marriage. Uh, so this is very dangerous. So many people give aspirin to people like this because they are having blood clots left. So they are to reduce the blood clots in aspirin, it's very dangerous. They increase the risk of the age. Aspirin may increase the risk of the age. So tell me the treatment. Treatment continue. Discontinue. Post Do you want to start the timing? Neither can you check on the back of the scene. Finish up on it. Do you want to finish it? No. Treatment. So tell me the treatments for CRT. This can be all the parts of the body. If it's a girl. A young girl. A young girl. Okay, next. Always give us. What to do if there is What is Rani Bozima for? Is it just? 
ایرانی بزیم هم So you give Nanibuzima for energy to treat RBO related therapy. What about other mycelidimas, diabetic care, retinopathy related mycelidimas? What say you give What about mycelidima caused post cancer surgery? What say you give So the thing is, if he says so specifically, it looks like it's a very specific thing. To our view, it is not very common, but our maturity was like one third years old. You can give the vasus in Hamid as less money, if he has more money, you can give the centers in Hamid as well. If he has little to no money, you give the IVD, intramuterial triumphs in his own. I mean, you give a strong reason in his trust me. So if you're reading six months of retina, this is a conclusion you come and making it shorter for all diseases at a time. So if, if this money is there, <coughs> you go for the centers. Money is less, you go for the So you have intravitreal anemia point five G for RBO related method. You also use something called as thirty percent intravitreal velocity has been related and used to be off label in a similar fashion. This is the main thing I can think about. The versus in only in India we use. And over in London, they never used the versus in They only used the versus in So if you say not even they want the same. If you say the versus in it is same only in India they use off label. Why they use it like that? It's unsafe, just some people say. They get say no, that's not true. Mostly companies are getting good enough money in clean percentages. In UK, so they are using user price. The demands are getting good enough. There is good branding for them. So they have banned because the people are cheaper. In India, they use cheaper. So here also, this patient, Manibuzima, are for rich, are for Manibuzima. The Rai means queen. So the queens we use Manibuzima. Our fingers use Manibuzima. Intravital TV is for extremely poor patients. Okay? Now. Zudex and uh, IVTA are stereotypes. Okay, it's triumphs in all the places are stereotypes, but they are the same. Zudex is biodegradable. It's a dexamethasone implant. Have you seen this implant ever? Small. Cute. Dexamethasone implant. Disgusting, and it's in the anterior segment. Sometimes, when you want the anterior segment to have that effect, it's also given from the ring. So, basically, it's like a small paste, and it's the rotor. So, it's a small paste on the retina. You keep on doing your job. You give it some good paste on the retina, slowly, slowly. It has a gene clean. So, in fact, uh, entails in our mind is metallic. So, 0.7 mg biodegradable. Okay, how do Is FDA approved for the treatment of mycelium associated with the tumor formation? Complications include fat transformation. Why? This is true. 
very much, Mr. Gurd. We are always having a cataract competition. Which cataract? PS. Intravital clamps and low. In both 1 mg and 4 mg donors. Who will remember this closing? 0.5 mg running this one. 0.7 mg ozodex. IVTA 1 mg. And 4 mg. This is a very simple technique. Right? Intravital wager for 0.5. Intravitreal steroids, although it is in practice, part of it. Intravitreal clamps will know this. One. One. Once you say one, you can also say four. It is effective both in improving vision and reducing vision loss in patients, then you say it. Okay? Same with the treatments for CRM. Intravitreal clamps. The treatment is? Discontinue. Discontinue or not? If I ask you how do you treat the macular edema in CR, then you can start with anti-bus. So you always start with intravital anti-bus. The patient is a rami. Intravital megabus. Intravital megabus. You know why? Then let's talk about anti-bus and finish it. Part family. After that. We talk talk about also next, which is a biodegradable steroid implant, exogenous implant. It is well proven in controlling the edema in CRV related macular edema. And then uh, that is part seven. And then you talk about ABTA. I will talk about one other thing. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now comes the tricky part. But it's very, very important. Okay. Follow. What is the follow? How much is 20 by 40? Let me look. Yeah. Six by eight. No. You divide by three. You divide 20 by three, you get six. Approximately. Divide uh, 40 by three, you get 12. Six by You get? So, visually, we do 6 to 12 or better. Every one to 2 weeks for the 6 months with a gradual intra interval taper to follow ups. So, if it's good visual acuity basically, so it's a non ACL CRV, you ask the patient to come every 2 months. Visual acuity is bad, 20 by 200 is CF. CF for me to do Every month for the first 6 months. Okay? The visual acuity is good. You ask the patient to call.
if visual acuity is bad, every one month, if visual acuity is good, every two months. Undirected, so you also call the patient back for looking at undirected bonus. This is probably very important now. If you do directed bonus, you'll be working on that. And then you can upload it. Good, you guys are thinking very nicely. Undirected bonus copy, looking for MBA. Again, directed for the relation, looking for NVD. There it is, careful directed bonus. Yeah. No, it is not careful for the directed. It is careful for the first examination. Because normally NVD is missed. And it is a new aspiration. Should we perform a follow follow-up visit? Evidence of early NVI. NVA should prompt. So, so if dilated fungus also, I guess, perform tasks. And dilated chronoscopy, dilated fungus also. What's that? Say, if we are supposed to do undilated chronoscopy, then dilating fungus fungus. Okay, then. Fungus copy can only dilate it. Okay. If not. Start with dilating. Say anything okay? Then you have to tell it. Okay. So, what immediate prompt immediate PRP and enter the therapy, okay? Immediate and we have to get PRP change. Patient should be informed that there is an 88% to 10% risk for the lymphoma. Oh, very, very important. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello, I see how you know. So, why is it that you will call the patient again and again? It's because you Just will be worried about the fellow I getting the VRD or CRD. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'll show you my secret. is some very important landmark trials in ophthalmology.
Thank <laughs> you. 